especially him. <laughs> Competition, man, that's what you want, you know, to be honest with you. I think it brings the best out of all the guys. And it just, you know, keep guys from being complacent, thinking they got a position. Um, so that's the thought process moving forward. Like, uh, you got to earn the right to run out on the field. And I'm, I'm constantly telling my guys to push the guys in front of me, all right, and embrace the competition. And uh, so I'm looking forward to it. For Xavier to come back for another year, what did that kind of mean for you? What are you excited about? Yeah, so, to get him for one more? Yeah, I mean, you know, anytime you get a chance to get Xavier Thomas back, you know, it's a big deal. And, uh, and he, he said he was coming back, and I was fired up. Uh, obviously, a guy with that kind of experience, um, athleticism, you know, I think he's eager to prove a lot of people wrong. Uh, we all know what he can do, it's just a matter of, you know, just like executing what he's done. So. We're excited to have you back. And you and uh, Coach Eason, yeah. uh, recruiting wise, what, what do you think is working with y'all? I know you brought in a number of big guys you right. specifically, but what dynamic is there between y'all two that's been so effective yeah. at the defensive line recruiting wise? Well, I think at the end of the day, just identifying what the need is, and the guys that we want to fit the profile of what we're looking for, um, kind of hot character kids that love the game of football, love the grind. That's what we're looking for, and you know, at the end of the day, man, we just trying to be ourselves. You know, not trying to be anyone else. Just be who you are. I think kids see that. They want to be a part of a program like that. So we we constantly talking about you know who we want as a staff, and we go out and identify those guys and, and, and you know, try to get them here as soon as possible. You can tell me where I'm wrong, but I kind of feel like you have four known entities yep. in those top four. Then you kind of have Kate, I mean, uh, uh, Kevin and, and Greg, right. who've been around for a little while. Where, where does Cade and Zaire kind of fit in all that, and how important is this fall camp for those two guys? Really, those four guys. Right. Well, you know, I said in the spring, man, that I wanted to definitely get, you know, Greg and Kevin a lot of reps. Right. All right, because I was... I'm losing four guys, so it's important that they get the game reps, as much reps as they can possibly get. So, uh, coming out of spring, I felt good about Greg and, and, and Kevin. Now, Zaire and Kate, they're developmental guys, uh, didn't get a lot of reps, played a lot of the scout team last year. So, this, man, it's super important that they get the reps uh, this fall as much as we can. Obviously, I got to get get my guys ready to play, but they, I mean, so far, even this summer, they've done a good job in the weight room, you know, all those things that need to happen, but it's, it's, it's super important that they continue to progress at a high level, and uh, uh, they're doing that, so I'm anxious to see those guys uh, put the work in this fall. I'm sorry, I got here late, I think you were just talking about those two guys, but just, if yeah. If you didn't have so much depth, how would you feel about sending Zaire and Cave out there right now? Kind of where That's a good question. Uh, you know, I would, I would be concerned, you know, uh, because they don't have the, they don't have the reps. Uh, so it's, it's important that they continue to develop in the classroom, learning the, uh, the system, learning what we're doing technique-wise, fundamentally-wise, and then, you know, getting out there and try to execute at a high level. And they know that, you know. And, Hopefully, um, you know we got a, we got a few weeks to go before we start up. You know we're we're now having segment meetings with our guys, uh, trying to you know get caught up. Now we're back in football mode, we're talking football techniques and things like that. So there's a learning curve that needs to happen, and um, I'm hopeful. You know, they're, they're, you know, from from a, you know, up top standpoint, from, from learning and understanding what we do, hopefully they can get it. And then now it's just trying to, got to transfer it over on the football field. And, uh, I, I have confidence that they'll be able to do that. KJ, to me, it seemed like he kind of mid-season yeah. took that next step, the one that, that everybody's kind of been waiting on. What was the impetus for that? What what caused did, did you see it? Yeah. What caused it? And, and can he go even further this year? Uh, you know, I think I think KJ just really 
he, um, he he got healthy. You know, he was, he was banged up a little bit. He's had some knee injuries. And um, I just think, man, he, we put him in positions where he felt like, man, I just got to play free. You know, I can't worry about things I can't control. I think early on, um, he was worried about you know, who's starting, why I'm not starting, things like that. But the dude worked his butt off, man. And, he, you know, he went out there and, and he did everything that we thought he could do. Uh, and I think at the end of the day, it was about confidence. And I think he, he uh, got confidence in himself to go out and play at a high level. And I'm, I'm proud of him. I know for sure that uh, he's going to have a great year. Um, you know, I, I think I think the leadership that KJ has always displayed has been a full display in my group. You know, he's taken on that role and he's done a really, really good job. So I'm looking forward to KJ to really have an outstanding game. Speaking of KJ, what has it been like for him and Xavier Thomas to be able to return that, like, that one final year? And, yeah. and what is their leadership in this position going into this season? Well, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, I was talking to my wife the other day. You know, I've been with these guys you know, this is six years. Right? And, you know, this is, man, it's, it's unbelievable how we've. Um, we've all matured in that position, in that role. Uh, you know, I think I matured as a position coach. They matured as players. And this is our final ride uh, together. And uh, I'm excited. You know, obviously, when David Thomas said he was coming back, you know, it was a big deal. Okay, it was a big deal. I'm glad. And uh, now we get a chance to hopefully go out and play at a high level, you know, be productive on the field. Um, get, you know, Live out the dreams that you know, they want as players, and uh, I think they have that opportunity. You know, KJ is a, is a uh, you know, he's a leader. He's a vocal leader. Xavier Thomas uh, this season has you know obviously this off season has been more of a, uh, a leader by example. You know, he's, he's gotten his body in, in great shape. Uh, mentally, he's good. Uh, he's got physical. He's always been a physical player. He's got bigger, stronger. He's leaned out. He's changed his body type. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with the effort so far. Coach Richardson mentioned earlier that nobody on the staff felt like last year was a down year. Yeah. Chris, like, you kind of elaborate on that and maybe how that affects your feelings injury this year. I don't think it was a down year. We won 10 games, you know, and obviously we didn't get the goal. Uh, going to the playoffs, but you know, to win 10 games, man, that's huge. And you know, I think at the end of the day, you got to have an appreciation for winning. We learned that. You know, Coach Sweeney talks about that. We talked about that as players at Alabama. Coach Stallings preached that. You got to have an appreciation for winning football games, and we won 10 games. So it wasn't a down year in my opinion. XT told us in the spring he, he got too fat. Yeah. He was really you know, open about it. <clears throat> and it seems like it's just been a process of you know, getting the body right, getting yeah. the mind right. Is this the best he's been since he's been here in yes, those spaces? And what, what can you kind of expect out of him? Not numbers wise, right. but just out of the, the, the man. Yeah. Well, it, it is the best. You know, I said, I said uh, last year, XT, that was the best version of XT, David Thomas. Right in every area, right? And, you know, um, I, you know, Xavier got, he got baptized this all season. Uh, he's changed his life, man. He's changed his perspective on things. Um, just the way he's working, he's changed his body. You know, he's just a different dude. And that's, the, that's what we want from him. And so now, he's just gotta have some great things happen early and just continue that progression. And uh, I'm just looking forward to seeing him play, you know, and, and, and being there to be a mentor, uh, to lead him, uh, to advise him when he needs my help. Uh, I've been around Xavier. We've, we've gone through a lot together, personally. And uh, I feel like, you know, I know everything about him. And I want, just, I want him to have success. Like I want all my guys. Uh, but David Thomas, I'm going to have some success. We've been talking for a little over nine and a half minutes. Haven't mentioned a guy by the name of Miles Murphy. <laughs> that guy. That guy. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, he's special. He's special. Uh, 
what does he do? Like, he was good last year, yeah. really good. But what does he do to then take that next step? Right. Well, you know, Miles should have had double digit sacks last year, and very capable of doing that. Uh, I think now we just have to finish. You know, uh, he he's done a good job with his body. He's done a good job of getting in the best shape that he could possibly be in. Uh, he's already big, strong, fast, explosive. Now it's just about to finish. And he's working on that with D Love, our strength conditioning staff. Uh, he's doing you know, prehab stuff, all the things that he needs to do uh, to be functionally ready to go out and execute at a high level. Now it's just when you get on the field, you just gotta, you gotta get the job done. And, I believe Miles Murphy. I believe in Miles. I trust Miles. And he's going to have an unbelievable season. When I look at his size, I see the explosiveness in his hands, yeah. the first step. I can't figure out who he reminds me of. He's, he's definitely Miles Murphy. But is there any anybody that you played with against or that he kind of reminds you of him? You know, man, I, I try to be careful and not try to prepare. You know, I think, I think um, all I can tell you, man, is that you know, Miles Murphy is just not many that, that, you know, that you can find like him. Um, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know. Um, I feel good about it. I feel good. Uh, you know, at the end of spring, you know, we left out with uh, over six guys. Uh, obviously, you know, I would love to go into go into the fall with six guys that can go in and execute at a high level. Um, but I, I do I feel good about my depth. Uh, I think guys can go in and play. You know, now it's just you know getting Zaire and K. Denhoff, getting them ready, and uh, that's kind of the thought process moving forward. Coach, what has been the uh, something that the during the spring that this group has improved on the most, and what's your area of emphasis going into the summer? Well, my word this summer was uh, even at the end of spring was being consistent. All right, consistency. Uh, you know, we got to continue to get better. You know, and uh, not make a lot of mistakes. Uh, you know, no mental errors, no uh, missed tackles, missed sacks, missed opportunity, things like that. Uh, my goal is, hey man, let's let's. let's uh, Let's go in with the thought process of every day, let's get better. All right, let's get focused in on the main thing. Um, and that's what I'm looking for. Consistency is the big thing. Back to Miles for a second. Does he pay any attention to mock drafts this time of year? He's already a guy that you've seen the first round of a lot of these. Is he someone that puts any stock in that, or is he just kind of laser focused on what he has to do on a day-to-day -day basis to get better? Yeah, I, I don't think Miles worry about that. He's not that type of player, that type of young man. His focus is what can he do to help his team and everything else to take care of himself. So Miles knows that he has an opportunity. All right, but you know, at the end of the day, if you don't go out and play at a high level, you know, you may not get that. But I think he's focused in on getting his body in shape. He's focused in on how he can help our team and the expectation that we have from a D line. Uh, that's kind of been his focus. What do you think are going to be some of the differences between Coach Goodwin and Coach Venables? <laughs> That's a loaded question. Uh, there's a lot of differences. Uh, you know, I think, I think Wes is just going to be who he is. Um, Wes is, I think, going into this, this uh, spring, we, as a staff, decided to slow down the installs, uh, really to help our guys. Uh, you know, Coach V, you see, he is an energetic, fiery guy. That's not the best personality. And, but at the end of the day, they both love the game of football. They love, they love you know, calling defenses and all those things. So I don't think from that perspective, you won't see any changes. He's a younger guy in the grand scheme of coaching, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, that speaks to a guy that has a degree of talent that's been able to progress so quickly. So for someone that's on the outside, can you describe what exactly that looks like? What's allowed him to progress so quickly? Oh, he's smart. Super smart. He's been around great coaches, great defensive minds. You know, he does a good job of just uh, 
and just simplifying things, understanding football, understanding defenses. And I think that's helped with his progression. And, and, and kids, our players can relate to that. They relate to him. He's a, he's a, he's a great person. And um, we're excited to have Wes and to be a part of what we're trying to do defensively. And, and having Wes and Mickey lead us, I'm excited for that. Speaking of that, so in the bowl game, everybody's got a new role. You're up in the box, yeah. Wes is down on the field. When the bowl game was over, and yeah. the defense had played so well, what was the, the, the thought? Like, how did you guys grade yourselves? And did you go, wow, that, that was as good as could be expected? Or? Well, um, we were excited, first of all, happy to get the win. Um, you know, we, we heard all the naysayers and, and all the stuff. You know, Clemson defense left, you know, Coach V left. We want to go out and prove that you know we can. We can our guys still can play at a high level, and uh, we were excited. We we're excited about what our players were able to do and how we came together as a unit defensively and held everything together. And so uh, that, that's the confidence that we have. And we we want to be great. We want to be great as coaches. We want to be great uh, defensively. Uh, Coach B has set the standard here at Clemson in defense and. We want to continue with that standard. So what, what do you think about that? When people say Venables is gone, this defense isn't going to be as good. Like, how, what do you personally feel when you, when you hear that? It don't bother me. You know, I, you know, I played defense a long time. I've had many defensive coordinators. The standard is a standard. Uh, for a long time, country defense has always been strong. So I don't think that's the bottom I think at the end of the day, we got a, we got a job to do. You know, and we're going to do that. So, but the standard is the standard. Give us an idea how freakishly talented this defensive line is. Give an idea? Yeah. Uh, you know, they across the board. We got about seven, eight guys. That, you know, you think about Murphy, KJ, Mercedes, TD, all of them. They're all, we're, we're deep, we're three deep. Coach Sweeney have used the, 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 used the uh, uh, to deal with, you know, trying to compare the 14 D line. Uh, and, you know, we're very close to that. You know, obviously we got to go out and play, but this is a this is a very talented group. And, uh, but there's a high expectation in that. That's the, expect the expectation has always been there, you know. And, you know, now our guys just got to, we got to go out and play. You know, don't read all the clippings. People telling you how great you are. You just lock in and go out and execute, play at a high level, <coughs> be dominant, and let everything else take care of itself. But this is a very talented team. What step do you think Miles will take this year? What step? Uh, I think he, you know, he'll be a double-digit guy, sack-wise. I think you know he's proven that he has all the ability to be able to do that. Now it's just a matter of going out and finish, like I said earlier. He's got to finish those, those opportunities, finish those sacks. But uh, I expect Miles Murphy just to be dominant. You, you mentioned uh, Greg and Kevin sort of as your number, your five, fifth and sixth defensive ends back on the screen. What, how much confidence do you have in those guys if you have to put them on the field and play some of the different snaps from the top to one? Yeah, I, I'm very confident now coming out of spring practice uh, that they can go in and execute. You know, uh, as we start fall practice, we'll get more reps. They'll get more reps with the first team. And, you know, I feel good. I feel good, man. I, I, I left. Uh, I think about Greg. I think about, you know, both of those guys were former linebackers that moved to the end to be able to buy into what the defensive end position looks like. Um, it's, it's been really good. So I have full confidence that they can go out and play. Going back to Wes for a minute, I've heard some stories about him and his, his brain. Is there a Wes story that game planning or during some time he's just kind of surprised you with like how did he know that or how yeah. did he remember that? Is there a Wes story that, that you like to tell? I wish I had one, man. All I know is if, 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 if Coach V would ask Wes about, hey, something happened in 2014, 15, or, or even 13, and Wes can, I'm telling you, he can find the clip right then, uh, and pull it up, and, and, or he can just state exactly what happened. So I'm always, uh, 
not surprised because I've been around West a little bit, but at that moment, sometimes it just shocked me. I can barely remember last week. And this guy goes back to remember 2012, 13, so I believe it. Uh, but I don't, I don't have many West Coast. I really don't. Yeah, I will. How unique, is, how unique is that in the profession to have a guy who has almost instantaneous recall? It's like very that. unique. It's very unique. And, uh, it blows my mind. I'm like, how do you able to do that? But it's, uh, you, know, you find guys like that. West is one. He's unbelievable. He is uh, super smart, like I said. Uh, you know, we had a position coach. I had a position coach that Wes used to work for uh, in Ellis Johnson. And uh, so Wes and I have story, stories about Ellis that uh, we constantly talk about. But, uh, coach Johnson would talk about Wes as, as a super smart guy. So, hey, whatever Wes says, you better believe me. And so I'm always, I keep that in the back of my mind when I think about Wes. We've, we've talked over the past about getting plays in faster. Yeah. Does that help Wes standing on the sideline being able to say, okay, they've come out with two tights yeah. and, a, and a back offset, so I know what's coming, yeah. and, and can get a play in quicker? Right. Well, I, I think it does. You know, we, it's a lot of information that happens. You know, trying to process what's personnel, what's down the distance, who's in the game, you know, all those things. I think it does. I think it, it helps with for him, he could better probably answer that for you, but um, I think for him, just getting all that information and processing, uh, it helps him in that, in that, in that regard. And, and being up top, you know, Mickey and I are we're looking at things as well. Uh, you know, I'm talking to the D-line guy, Mickey's talking to Wes, and there's just a lot going on, a lot of communication. Uh, but these guys do a great job here. Coach, you go way back in seven. Yes, sir. Is, is it hard to believe that he's now the old man among coaches in the ACC? Longest tenure coach? Well, uh, see, I got a 30 year, 30 plus year history for Sweden. Yeah, I'll I tell you this the first time I walked into his meeting, we were staff meeting. He was talking to me, and he was just leading the charge, and I, I was taken back. I'm like, wow, that's, uh, that's pretty impressive. I didn't know that Luke could do that, that type of thing. That type of thing. I'm not surprised by it at all. I saw his walk on, I saw his work ethic, I saw his details and all that he did. Just his relationship that he had with his teammates. I'm not surprised at all. Looking back to the transition, the hardest part of the transition like that when you have somebody who's been here for so long and so much of an institutional part of what's going on just in hindsight. Looking back to that transition, uh, I guess the unknown, like what's going to happen, you know, how we're going to look on the field, the bowl game, you know, we're going to get the buy in for the players. Uh, that part, the you unknown know, of that was. was at the beginning, it's like, okay, what's going to happen? But, it, you know, after a while, man, you just, you, you saw the kids, the players. They bought in, and they, they came to work. And we put out a good product. Our guys played fast, they played well. So, you know, after that, we wouldn't worry about it. We didn't think about it. Like, okay, here we go, guys. Let's get it done. But, you know, like I said earlier, Coach B, you know, he, he set the standard defensively in the way our guys played. And, and that standard is still there. And that's what we want to, as a staff, that's what we want to do. We want to keep that same standard. I mean, I anything about this realignment at all? Remember, bumps into the SEC. I don't, man. You know, I, yeah, that's uh, that's for the AD, the president, the commissioner. You know, I'm a football coach. My job is to get my guys ready. Uh, I don't really worry about it. You know, we, we play we play Georgia Tech, and that's that's kind of our focus as coaches. Apologies if you've already been asked this, but KJ's a guy with a big personality. We'll yeah. be hearing from him tomorrow. He's got a ton of experience. What does he bring to this unit? 
he brings a lot. He's, KJ is very savvy. Uh, obviously, he's smart. He's a, he's a coach's son, so he knows the game. Uh, he's been around. Uh, I love KJ. I love, you know, he's now my leader in my group. And he's taking on that role, man. And, uh, I'm excited for him. I'm excited to see his progression continue, you know, to get better. And, uh, and the way we're going to utilize him. This fall, I'm excited to see that. So, What's it like for you watching a guy like that develop from his first year here yeah. to becoming the leader of the year? I'm, I'm happy for him, man. Because you know, if you think about KJ, he, you know, remember he, he decided he wanted to be retro. He told Coach Sweeney, he said, "Hey, you know, I want to, I want to get retro." You know, he made our decision when that happened. He made it easy for us uh, in terms of what we're going to do with KJ. So he saw it. He had some self-awareness. He saw what he needed to do. And now, you know, he's just seeing the progression from freshman year to even last year. To me, it was a breakout year. Okay? And then this season, uh, as I had the opportunity to you know, help himself in the draft, be the kind of player he wants to be. So I'm excited for him. You know, he's excited. He's worked his tail off. Change his body composition. He's gotten bigger. He's gotten stronger. So he's doing a really good job. Yeah. Right. Oh, the ceiling is off the charts. I heard someone mention him. Very similar to uh, Gaines Adams. I heard that name mentioned. But you know the thing about Miles is he's so fast. He's just freakish. You know, explosive, long, just 275, you know, 65, close to 66. You know, he, he uh, he's a great young man. He doesn't get caught up in all the uh, in all this all the stuff that's going on with football. He's just even kill type of young man. So. I've been around a lot of great players. Uh, even the ones I was with in Alabama, he's, he's definitely on that level. It's a lot of those guys. I haven't gotten that far. Uh, I think, you know, our, 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 our process has been, you know, since I've been the, the coach, is uh, how you do it during the week of, of practice. And obviously, somebody got to run out there first. And then, it's based off that, it's based on how you, how you practice, how you play, things like that. So, we're going to continue that. I do, I do, I am, I'm really excited that I have enough depth that guys can, can push each other. Right? And there's competition all over the place. And that's going to help. That's going to help our guys a lot. I think XT is kind of joking. We asked him what he'll do at 255, that you can't do at 265. He said, you'll see. Do you know he's down to that weight at all? Uh, I don't know exactly. I know he's not, he's not, he's not as heavy anymore. I don't know exact weight. Um, man, he's moving. He's, he's bending well. He is faster. He's twisted up. Uh, very explosive, and uh, we talked about getting to that 55, uh, but I don't know his exact weight right now. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thanks,